Okay, we have written another integral from the UK integration B, sample number seven. We have the integral from zero to infinity of x to the n minus one times e to the minus x dx. Okay, at first I was definitely planning on skipping this one. The trouble is, you may notice that what we have here, this whole integral, this is exactly the gamma function. So normally, when I do problems like this, I go right to the gamma function, but in this case, there's nothing to do because it's already set up. This right here is the input, so like, this whole thing is gamma of n. So normally I would just go right to the solution, write gamma of n, and we'd be done in like three seconds, but that's a pretty terrible video. So, so what we can do instead is try to derive this formula using integration by parts, take a longer way, and eventually get back to this, hopefully, if it works all right. And before we get started with that, one thing I should mention is we're given that n is a member of the positive integers. And I don't know if Evan's watching, but I tried to draw it better. I don't know if that's better, but that's, that's just my attempt at doing a better z. So anyway, to get started, my method is just to do integration by parts using the DI method or tabular integration over here to the right. I think what I wanna do is differentiate x to the n minus one and integrate e to the minus x. So first, let's start by integrating. So when you integrate e to the minus x, you're gonna get minus e minus x, and then you do it again, and then the minus is gonna come out again, and you're gonna get back to a plus. So what's gonna happen is you're just gonna have these alternating signs on the e minus x. And then when you differentiate over here, we're just using power rule, this is gonna become n minus one times x to the n minus two. And then the next one, we're quickly gonna run out of space, but I'll just, I'll do a few of these. So this one's gonna be n minus one times n minus two, x to the n minus three. And then this pattern is just gonna kinda of keep going like this. Eventually what's gonna happen, see this n's finite, so eventually we're gonna have something like n minus one, n minus two, all the way down to two, and then the exponent on the x is just gonna be one. But then if we differentiate this one more time, the x is gone, and here we're gonna have just n minus one factorial, which is gonna go all the way to one. And then if you do it one more time, you're gonna have a zero. Now we don't know exactly how many rows we have here. It's dependent on n, of course. But what we can do is kind of generalize it, just like kind of look at one. We can kind of see the way the plus and minus signs are going, that we can kind of look at it like, instead of worrying about everything out front here, let's just take like, let's just take this one right here. So it's always gonna be minus that we're evaluating. We're gonna have some constant value, all these n values up front for each of these. So we'll call that a c. And then we'll have x to some exponent d, another numeric value. And then we're just gonna have this times e minus x, and we're evaluating this from zero to infinity. Well, when you go ahead and evaluate this, first at infinity, this piece is going to zero because we've got the negative exponent. Now, of course, x to the d, this is going to infinity, but the exponential is much more powerful. So what's gonna happen when this is going to infinity, this is going to zero. And then when you plug in and evaluate at zero, this term is gonna be just going to one. This is just some number, but then we have this zero. So this is all going to zero. So what's gonna happen for all these diagonals is they're all getting wiped out and none of that matters. The only thing that's gonna matter is this last one right here. So now all we need to worry about is what's at the bottom here. The last row is an integral, but this is all zeroed up because of this zero. So we don't care about that. We just want this diagonal. It doesn't really matter where we put the minus sign, but either way, it's either gonna be here or here. So what we need to evaluate is gonna be minus n minus one factorial times e to the minus x from zero to infinity. And when we evaluate this, this piece here is just a constant value. You plug in infinity, this is going to zero. So this first part's going to zero. Then for the second part, minus times minus is plus. We have this n minus one factorial, but now you plug in zero here, e to the zero is just one. And so for my final solution of this, we just have n minus one factorial. And now just going back to what we found at the beginning, that this integral is the same thing as gamma of n, well, we do have a way to equate the gamma function to factorials. We have this formula, like I usually write it like this, gamma of n plus one equals n factorial, but this is the same thing as saying that gamma of n equals n minus one factorial. And so gamma of n is the same thing as n minus one factorial, oftentimes because we are dealing with integers in this example, so usually with integers, you're gonna use factorial, but you could also express it as the gamma function. And also we didn't necessarily need this exact restriction right here because the gamma function is defined for non-integer values. It just has some restrictions where it's not defined for negative integers. So, so maybe just to simplify everything they gave us this condition of positive integers. 
Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks everyone for watching. Have a good day.